Wow, that's wonderful. After a long period of testing fans' patience with silence, SpaceX and Elon Musk have recently revealed new information about the progress of 2024's most important mission, Polaris Dawn. More notably, unlike the previous news, the new update this time fires the public up more than ever because it shows that we are getting much closer to the launch date of the mission. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Considered the most important mission of 2024, Polaris Dawn will lay the first brick in researching and collecting important data to serve Musk's ambition to colonize Mars. It is operated by SpaceX on behalf of Shift 4 Payments, CEO Jared Isaacman, scheduled to launch no earlier than the summer of 2024. The flight will be using a Crew Dragon atop SpaceX Falcon 9 and is the first of three planned missions in the Polaris program. Throughout their time in orbit, Dragon and the crew will reach the highest altitude flown in Earth's orbit since Apollo, test Starlink and conduct more than 35 research experiments in addition to the spacewalk. On April 3, the Polaris Dawn organizers once again updated the program's progress. According to the tweet, SpaceX shared that the Polaris Dawn Dragon is headed to vacuum chamber testing. Teams will recreate expected conditions in space by lowering and raising the vehicle's pressures to ensure Dragon performs as expected, both during and after the first commercial spacewalk. They'll also test for any off-gassing of materials that may take place while operating a vacuum, they added. On the same day, Elon Musk retweeted, This will be the first commercial spacewalk. Jared Isaacman also shared this tweet and couldn't hide his excitement. Best part of this picture is being around all the SpaceX team that makes commercial missions like Polaris program possible. So glad the billionaires are using their wealth to push the commercialization effort and serve humanity's development. Perhaps the public is also looking forward to the reveal of SpaceX's first EV suit for commercial spacewalks, upgraded from the current intravehicular suit. Vacuum chamber testing that the Dragon is headed is a crucial step in its journey toward the launch pad. It involves placing the spacecraft or its components inside a sealed chamber from which air is removed to create a vacuum environment similar to space. Space is a vacuum devoid of atmosphere and air pressure. Therefore, testing spacecraft in a vacuum chamber helps simulate the conditions they will experience in space accurately. This includes factors like temperature extremes, radiation exposure, and the absence of air. In space, objects can experience extreme temperature variations, from extreme cold in the shadowed areas to intense heat when exposed to sunlight. Vacuum chamber testing allows engineers to replicate these temperature extremes by controlling the chamber's heating and cooling systems. The vacuum chamber creates a low-pressure environment, simulating the lack of atmospheric pressure in space. This is important for testing the structural integrity of the spacecraft, ensuring that it can withstand the vacuum of space without leaking or collapsing. Some vacuum chambers are equipped with facilities for electromagnetic compatibility, EMC testing. This involves assessing how well the spacecraft's electronic systems perform in the absence of atmospheric interference, which is crucial for ensuring that onboard electronics function properly in space. Among vacuum chamber testing, Thermal Vacuum Testing, TVAC, is a specific type of test that combines vacuum conditions with controlled temperature cycling. Thermal Vacuum Testing testing is particularly important for assessing how materials, components, and systems behave under the combined stresses of vacuum and temperature variations. Vacuum chamber testing can be conducted at various stages of spacecraft development from testing individual components to integrated subsystems, and finally, the entire spacecraft. This allows engineers to identify and resolve any issues early in the development process. By the way, through the test, the engineering team can find out any off-gassing of materials while operating a vacuum. This is very important because off-gassing of materials in a vacuum environment can pose significant challenges for spacecraft operations. Off-gassing refers to the release of gases or vapors from materials such as adhesives, paints, coatings, or certain types of plastics when exposed to reduced pressure. Off-gassing can lead to serious problems on the spacecraft such as contamination of sensitive spacecraft components, surfaces, and optical elements. It can cause degradation of materials over time, leading to reduced performance or premature failure of spacecraft components, 
This can be particularly problematic for sensitive instruments, optical systems, or propulsion components. Even after vacuum chamber testing, some materials may continue to outgas during spacecraft operation in the vacuum of space. This ongoing outgassing can lead to contamination buildup over time and potentially impact mission objectives. So, how to manage it? Engineers employ various mitigation strategies to manage off-gassing in spacecraft systems, for example. They can focus on material selection or conducting thorough outgassing tests on materials before integration into spacecraft systems. Not only that, implementing contamination control measures such as cleanliness procedures and protective coatings can help reduce the effects of off-gassing on spacecraft surfaces and components. They also can incorporate venting systems within the spacecraft design, helping release trapped gases and minimize the buildup of contaminants. These meticulous steps are very crucial for ensuring the safety and success of their historic mission, especially for so-called the most dangerous SpaceX mission ever. Four astronauts taking part are Jared Isaacman, the braver billionaire behind the Polaris program of private space exploration, retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Scott Pottiette, and SpaceX employees Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon. Isaac Mann will command Polaris Dawn. Poteet will serve as a pilot, and Gillis and Menon will be the payload specialists and medical officers, respectively. All of them are not professional astronauts. They just have a little bit of experience in training. Thus, the sense of teamwork is highly estimated here. Like September 2021's Inspiration 4 mission, which Isaac Mann also commanded and funded, Polaris Dawn will be a free flyer. It will not meet up with the International Space Station. Nevertheless, the upcoming mission is much more ambitious and dangerous. The commercial spacewalk will occur around portions of the Van Allen radiation belt, which is giant swaths of magnetically trapped, highly energetic charged particles that surround Earth. As we know, the Earth's magnetosphere traps the high energy radiation particles and shields the Earth from solar storms and the constantly streaming solar wind that can damage technology as well as people living on Earth. These trapped particles form two belts of radiation, known as the Van Allen belts, that surround the Earth like enormous donuts. The outer belt is made up of billions of high energy particles that originate from the sun and the inner belt results from interactions of cosmic rays with Earth's atmosphere. This radiation is more damaging to humans than medical x-rays used to see broken bones or treat cancer. During the Apollo era, all Apollo mission astronauts had to flow through the radiation belts on their way to the moon. The Apollo missions followed ballistic trajectories, so they passed through the belts very quickly, which reduced the risk from this population to a very low level. Apollo missions took only about 4.5 days to get to the moon. The moon is just under 400,000 kilometers away, and the radiation belts only extend to around 60,000 kilometers, so not a huge fraction of that time is necessarily spent in those belts. In terms of numbers, there were nine Apollo missions transiting the entire belt, Apollo 8 and 10 to 17. Apollo 9 was low Earth orbit only, and three astronauts actually made that journey twice. So. It's safe to say that Polaris is towards a task that never has been undertaken. A spacewalk in such most dangerous place is conducted by non-astronaut people. This contributes to increasing the challenge for the game and also poses more pressure on SpaceX to develop a design of an EVA suit that is dedicated to the extremely high radiation environment. However, failure is not an option. SpaceX needs it for its Mars colonization. One of the largest hazards for astronauts traveling to Mars will be overcoming exposure to high-energy radiation from the solar wind, solar storms, and galactic cosmic rays that originate outside of our solar system. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time